Thank you very much for your attendance in this virtual cafe that Benfic regularly does um, to deal with the current issues that we find interesting for our clients. I have the honor to introduce my colleagues from Benfix, Maria Jose Moragas, Xavier Domenac, and Josep Maria Bastons from the restructuring and insolvency area. On this occasion, we have the luxury to have two partners from DFK International, uh, Christoph Walner, lawyer and partner of PSP in the Munich office, and Hayley Simons, um, partner and head of insolvency and advisory in Shaw Gibbs in the London office. This webinar uh, will go through the opportunities for foreign investors and company, companies arising from the new uh, insolvency and restructuring regulation here in Spain. Uh, this session will be recorded and shared in our social media channels, and we will leave some minutes at the end of the presentation for questions. Thank you very much for your time and hopefully you will enjoy it. Josep Maria, the floor is yours. Thank you. So, okay, let's just start with um, with the presentation. As Alba said, uh, it go through the, um, the opportunities of the new restructuring law in Spain, which was um, approved um, in September 22. So uh, you, we have a bit more than one year of experience with it. And it comes from the transposition of the European Directive of Restructuring and Insolvency. Um, so this is um, the content of what we'll be talking about today. Uh, first of all, we will make a bit of a, a summary of the, um, of the main uh, changes uh, come to Spain from this European Directive. I, um, I think uh, our, our colleagues from, from uh, Germany and UK will we'll share with us uh, some some similarities um, between uh, both uh, laws uh, and then we'll focus on the opportunities uh, we see for, for debtors on, and creditors which are out of Spain uh, that can use these tools that um, have been given to us with the, with this new regulation okay so let's start with um with a summary of the of the main uh, changes. Okay, um, <laughs> the, um, the the first thing. Okay, we, we will center the the, um, the presentation on on the restructuring plans. Uh, we won't talk about the the real the, the standard um, insolvency procedure uh, because uh, we we want to talk about um, continuation of companies. Okay. And um, we have a, a second book, which uh, in, inside the law, which um, established the rules of restructuring plans. Um, first of all, I want to say that um, this is a restructuring plan. It's not an agreement. What what I mean? I mean this does not this doesn't not doesn't need to be um, agreed by everyone and uh, and, and um, let's say majority of creditors. Okay, you propose a plan and the plan is implemented. Uh, that's how it works. And we'll see um, what requirements and what uh, rules must follow. Um, you, you must follow to, to accomplish that. OK, um, who can propose a plan? Um, the, the company, the debtor, of course, and but also it's important to know that creators can propose a plan, a restructuring plan to a company. Um, with with uh, with the, um, the the measures they they think the company may need to restructure uh, the debt, okay. Also, the content of the plan is um, is composed by by two items, which are operative restructuration when the company needs to uh, make some changes in the cost structure, um, and you need to affect uh, agreements and contracts, okay. This, this is one the, the, one important part of the of the restructuring plan, and uh, then comes the financial restructuration, which which is um, finally the, the the final goal. Okay, when you can uh, you can propose uh, debt discharge, uh, the in general terms of debt changes, and uh, even capitalization of debt um, uh, to as as a, as a proposal to the creditors. Okay. 
uh, in the content of the plan. It is very important. We will talk about this later. Um, the class formation. The class formation means the agrupation of creators in some classes that will be very important after in the in the rotation and the probation of the plan. OK. Um, what effects? What effects can have the plan? Well, um, the plan, if is approved, can be imposed to the creators who have voted no. Um, to do that, you need to uh, follow um, court tramitation and um, and you can and you can um, uh, achieve this impo imposition okay to those who initially don't want to be affected this is this is very interesting as a as a tool of uh, financial restructuring of course as you can imagine we will talk about an an, an, uh, an example uh, the the main example occurred in spain um, this year so let's follow. OK. Um, um, we, we in Spain, I think this is um, this is a particularity in Spain which may don't. I, I'm not sure if it exists in, in another country. I, I think no. Um, is we have an, a condition, a, a continuation, a special process for micro companies. OK, so these micro companies are companies which have less than 10 employees, um, less than 350,000 um, liabilities or 700,000 um, revenue. OK, and um, if the company is that is in, um, is have these characteristics um, can can um, can use or must use this, this special process for micro companies. OK. Um, this um, finally, the the, the 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 goal is the same: is is to get a, um, a restructuring plan approved and even imposed. But you have main different. You have some 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 difference um, from from the standard, let's say standard um, restructuring plan. Um, we know that the the European the European Union is interested in this special uh, speciality, and they are studying if they include it. Uh, in the new um, in the new directive on on insolvency and restructuration, so they 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 um, we think they like it. Okay, may, the main difference is um, between these um, special process for micro companies um, are that everything that is in on the tramitation takes uh, takes um, place in a in a public digital platform. And you need to do it um, online with official forms that, that are pre pre made by, by the um, by the public uh, authorities. Okay, um, is is a much faster uh, proceed procedure, and creators have special powers. But what, what I mean, I mean, for example, if fifty percent of the creators decide that the company that they don't want to be uh, the, the, that the company should not continue, um, they can decide just to uh, send it to liquidation. OK, with with no even uh, without um, explaining why they can just say to the court and the court must um, start liquidation of the company. OK. Uh, a very important item is that absolute priority rule, which is required. I will, will explain this later, but um, it, it is required in the standard um, restructuring plans. It's not required here in the in the um, in the uh, micro companies uh, process. OK. This is this is very important. I will explain uh, later why um, a very a very important difference uh, is that creators who don't appear to the negotiation we, who doesn't say nothing are considered to vote yes so um, in terms of making ma the majority it is very important and public credit can be affected and even is assumed to vote yes if it doesn't say the opposite when um, that discharge is maximum is a, uh, a maximum of 15 percent okay so um, these are the main difference, which are, um, as you see, very important. Well, as I said, um, 
the procedure is every, is everything through uh, this uh, public digital platform, which is working more or less nowadays. Uh, <laughs> it, it can be improved, of course. And the procedure is you, you present a plan on the platform with all the all the documents uh, which are required. I, will, I, will, I won't extend on that. There is an allegation process process for the creators. After that, um, if the plan is um, um, accomplishes the rules and and what the law says, uh, it starts um, a voting process, uh, which takes fifteen days, and the plan is approved. If the majorities of and uh, um, the classes uh, approve the the plan, and after that, um, you can ask the court the homologation of the plan, which means that the plan is imposed to the to those creators who uh, are who didn't vote yes or who vote no. Okay, so it's it's a way of imposing a restructuration plan to creditors for micro, micro companies. Okay, the the idea is um, okay the same of a restructuring plan or standard restructuring plan, but um, with these differences um, I've been explained to you. Okay. OK, so let's continue. Well, uh, I'll, I won't extend on on what happens um, with liquidations pro processes, but just wanted to tell you that. There could be some interesting asset opportunities uh, to purchase in, in Spain. Mm -hmm. uh, basically, basically what we call productive units that is it's uh, uh, um, it's an amount of, of um, uh, let's say contracts employees and assets you can buy um, globally and without the debt so you can extract the part of the company you are interested in and leave the debts in the in the uh, in in the company OK, in, in some cases that this could be very interesting. It, 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 it this is not new and it, this is happening a lot and is uh, something I think I think. You know, uh, out, of, out of Spain and well, uh, of course, uh, there could be um, individual assets opportunities um, of all kinds, as you can imagine. OK, so let's continue. Um, just just to comment on on a um, on a specific thing, there is a last article in the law which establishes that uh, companies out of Spain can be restructured in Spain. Um, when when the um, holding of these companies is based is based in Spain in, and is being restructured in Spain. Okay, if it happens, and the restructuring of the outside subsidiaries is needed to accomplish the restructuring plan of the holding, you can um, restructure it uh, in Spain. OK, and even it may keep secret. Um, what I mean, um, th there is a you, you can ask to the court to don't uh, publish uh, this proceed this procedure. OK, um, so uh, it, it can be an interesting tool um, for for holdings in Spain um, to restructure the subsidiaries uh, out of Spain. OK. OK, now let's start with um, with the main thing we wanted to talk about today, which is the restructuring plan. Um, and um, let's analyze um, the the company proposed plan. OK, the, the procedure uh, is the is this one. Uh, first of all, um, you must start with the negotiation. Um, it can be out of the court. It it must it, it will be out of the court. Okay, this um, you're you're not still uh, um, under the under the uh, the law the, the insolvency law rules. Okay, but you can do it totally out of the court or with the court knowledge. When you are when, when are you interested in um, inform the court? That you are negotiating, that you have started the negotiation, when you need to suspend uh, any individual enforcement actions, when when your assets are in danger, you can uh, inform the court of you have that you have started these negotiations to uh, reach a um, restructuring plan, 
and um, and and the court may approve this to suspend this individual enforcement. Okay, this um, won't affect public debt. Okay, public debt is is very protected um, by Spanish law nowadays. I think more than in other places. We'll see later with with our colleagues outside. Um, after the negotiation, um, even if we have uh, informed or we haven't, uh, you, we need to go to a public notary and make the plan approval. Um, we need to just um, write uh, the agreements that we have reached and what um, what um, what classes we have formed and what measures we have. And after that, if we need to homologate. Um, as I said, the homologation is required when you want to impose the plan um, restructuring actions to some creditors who, are, who, who don't agree. You need to hom homologate this plan in the court. You need a judge that says uh, that you all have to uh, pass through this, um, these uh, actions. Okay. This this is the, the, the this mm, the summary of the procedure. Uh, of course, um, there there are much more details of allegations. Uh, you can uh, creators have um, can make all kind of actions to to protect themselves as as, a, as it must be. But this is a bit um, the, the summary of the procedure. Okay, um, then uh, restructuring plans. Can be uh, to uh, with two types: uh, consensual and non-consensual. The consensual, as the as the name says, is is that plan that is approved um, by all the classes of creditors. It does not mean all the creditors. It means all the classes of creditors. Um, inside a class, if there is a measure of creditors approving the plan or voting yes to the plan. The class will vote yes. So you need to have majority in this inside these classes, okay? And when all the classes you have formed, and you are more or less free, we'll see to to form the classes you want with with some criteria, of course. Um, you can you can approve the plan. And um, on the other side, we have the non-consensual plans, which. Um, which, uh, as the name the name says, uh, in <coughs> consists in a plan which some classes uh, don't agree with the plan. Not not even some creators inside a class. When when a majority of inside a class votes no, the class votes no. And even in that case, we'll see now, you can uh, approve and homologate a plan. Okay. What what are the main the main rules we need to um, we need to uh, follow to the plan for the plan to be approved? Okay, the first of all is that the company which we are um, restructuring and which is proposing the plan must be viable. Okay, the viable the viability of the company is the main issue. Is the first issue you need, we need to analyze. As I said before, it doesn't mean that a company which is now, um, which isn't now uh, viable, viable um, can be restructured. Um, it can, because the plan can contain some op operative um, restructuring actions, um, changes in contracts, um, reducing um, um, human force or mm, I don't know, uh, closing some centers or whatever. OK, um, but. We need to have a viability, a viability plan, which uh, shows that the company will be viable. This is a, the main first rule we need to accomplish to propose a restructuring plan and, and the cre and creators must be might must agree with this. But OK. Um, in, in some cases, there will be an insolvency practitioner who um, check uh, will, will check this uh, that this occurs. Okay. The second 
um, the second rule is the best interest of creators. It means that um, the creators um, cannot receive a worse um, a worse um, situation with the plan than if the company is liquidated. OK, if, if, if the liquidation of uh, we need to calculate the the um, the liquidation uh, value of the company and um, and see what what all um, creators will, would receive in this case. If it's better with liquidation, we need to go to liquidation. OK, if, if comp I mean with non consensual plans with when creators don't agree with it. The, um, the next rule is the relative priority rule. I, I talked about a little bit um, before. It means that um, inside the class, um, all creators must must receive the same treatment. And the absolute priority rule that means that uh, someone in a class um, with a um, better scoring um, cannot receive less than the the classes below. Okay. These are these are the main rules we need to um, um, accomplish with when when we propose a plan. If the plan does not um, contain all these things, um, the plan can be non approved. OK, so it's important to take to take care of all this. OK, um, how how um, this is a, a let's say a, a summary of what I was explaining to you. Um, here um, um, we'll, we can see how a plan can be approved. We have the creditors, the class creditors, um, the classes of creditors we have formed. Um, we have in this example five uh, classes. We have uh, we, we need to separate uh, secure credits and the, they form the, 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 the best scoring class. Then we we need to um, separate uh, the second scoring classes. Um, uh, this separation is made um, by the rules of the insolvency law in Spain. And basically, um, I won't I won't uh, extend on that. But uh, basically, we have uh, privileged uh, we we call privileged uh, creditors, ordinary credits creditors, and subordinated. Okay, we need to separate separate um, these. Um, types of uh, creators in, in classes. But inside this uh, kind of uh, creators, we can separate again uh, in uh, several classes. OK, so uh, we form a secured credit uh, class, which is class A, uh, a class B with non-secured financial credits, um, the standard the standard banks, let's say. Um, we can form a, um, a class C, and in this example is non-secured strategic supplier credits. Uh, and the class C would be no uh, non-strategic supplier credits, and subordinated credits would be basically are, are the shareholders and, uh, and the and the administration of the company. Okay, so as I said before, we need to um, make a liquidation uh, um, uh, to calculate the liquidation value of the company. So this we will get a value which. From up to the bottom, will arrive to this uh, this amount of money, and a continuation value, which would arrive this to this level. This is important. We are now we can see here we are um, accomplishing the um, the best uh, interest of creditors uh, rule. Okay, you will see that uh, the creditors would get less money if the company is liquidated than is con the continuation okay and now we have here um non-consensual plan you can see the uh, the classes what, what are voting every class and we have here two class two classes what is voting no and three classes voting yes if we have this case and one of the classes is a secured class is what, what we call a privileged class the plan will be approved. And this it, it doesn't it doesn't matter the, the amount of, of money is inside of every class. Typically, class B will have a, a, a big amount of, of money. Even class C have can have a big amount of money uh, in that 
so um with um relative um small uh, amount of uh, credits you can approve a plan and impose it to all the rest okay we have to imagine that uh, this um, typically this class a we won't have any dis discharge on that but class b which is voting no can have a an important discharge of uh, on debt. They are voting no, and they'll have to um, pass through the plan. Okay, so uh, this is um I, we we think it's a very interesting rule, um uh, sorry a tool to to um, restructure companies and especially small companies. Why? Because the um, the um, cost of restructuring is is very high to small companies. And sometimes it's even impossible to to um, to to to, to, uh, um, to take make contact with with banks, for example. If they if they are negotiating the small positions, they even take answer the phone. Uh, I mean, in our emails. So um, it's very difficult. And we have with this an, an a very good tool to don't depend on that kind of predators who. Um, are not interested even in negotiation in negotiating with us. Okay. There is um, a second option, even even uh, more aggressive than the than the other, um, that says that um, a restructuring plan can be approved if one um, class that would get some. Um, recovery of the debt votes yes it can be imposed to all the others okay so it's it's more aggressive we don't need even the uh, secured class the privileged the privileged class and just with the vote of this class c that in doesn't matter the amount of money that is here the, the amount of debt we just with this we can impose the plan okay um subordinated um Typically, vote yes because are the main the, the same shareholders of the company, and we where where the where the continuation valley breaks, we say that these creditors are in the money, okay, um, we call this the the fulcrum class, okay, and and this is the the class that permits to impose all the plan. So imagine with with us, um, we we can impose it with um with a uh, amount of debt. Quite, quite um, well, whatever it is, it doesn't matter. So um, that's why we, I'm saying that um, this is a very interesting um, tool to restructure companies in in Spain. Okay, um, as I said, um, the plan can be proposed by creators as well. And and it can be non-consensual. Well, the same the same rules before, but proposed by um, the creditors. Um, this is these have a risk, of course, uh, to companies and investors um, which are outside of Spain, and it, it means that you can be you can be a, a plan can be imposed to you, okay, and and you need to pay special attention with the special micro companies procedure because it's very fast. And you can even real you can realize of it, and, and it's that, okay. And um, what I wanted to the, the interesting thing I wanted to explain to you is that you may acquire the equity of the company in exchange for your debt, okay. And this is the Spanish Celsa case. Um, Celsa is a huge company um, which uh, trades with uh, stainless steel. And it's, it's in a strategic uh, Spanish company. It it, it it has a special rules uh, from the government to to uh, acquire the, the equity. And even in that case, what has happened uh, is that creditors, the the financial funds, have take uh, taken the, um, the control of the company and capitali capitalizing um, their debt, they have acquired the company. Um, I have a, another picture explaining this. Okay, uh, sorry. Um, um, I, here we have the same um, the same um, um, classes, and I have added 
uh, the bottom um, another class which which isn't really a creditor um, or doesn't need to be a creditor, but um, is considered the shareholders uh, of the company are the worst scored class. OK, so. If we need to follow the absolute um, priority rule, um, shareholders um, cannot get a better um, mm -hmm. a better a better um, uh, treatment than the others. So um, when you get a discharge debt, you the company is having a benefit, of course, because um, um, less less uh, debt means uh, means means a uh, benefit to the company. And because of the fact that the company is owned by the shareholders, they are being treated in a better way than creditors because they, they are getting this this benefit of the debt discharge. When this happens, um, shed, uh, shareholders should uh, decrease the capital to don't um, have this situation. But if the proposal of the plan um, says that creditors uh, made by made by creditors says that the their debt um, is converted into capital, the actual shareholders um, are dissolved in and they lo lose control of the company. OK, so this is a way that in, uh, investors have and and and, and the, the creditors have to take control of a company and it has happened in a huge and strategic um company in spain so so it it is a very powerful tool uh to accomplish this okay um i i i hope um okay uh, the, the, the um, um, the rules to approve the plan are the same than in the other cases and, and, and liquidation value must be uh, smaller than continuation value and, and so on and so forth. OK, so that's how, what I wanted to explain you today. Um, I don't know if you have any questions or if someone wants to say something. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Jacques Maria. I do have a question. Um, are the cost of these processes very high in Spain um, from the economic side and from the how long it takes from from the time? Um, it can be very. Uh, the cost can be very high, as high as you want. It depends um, on the on the um, the size of the company. Uh, mainly, the Felsa case is has been uh, very, very, very expensive, um, and and in it, the the cost will depend, I think, uh, on basic mostly on on the on the negotiations you need to do. Okay, if you have lots of creditors or um, a small amount of creditors, it it will depend on that. If if you go to a non-consensual plan and with mm, three or four creators let's say uh, you can approve it uh, the cost won't be that high mm -hmm. and and the, and the time how long can it takes to complete the process it it, it can be it, it depends a, a bit on the um, on the on, on different ways of the tramitation, but you can have it approved in between three and six months, let's say. Okay. And okay. for the for the Thank micro you. for the micro companies process, uh, even even less than that. In in the three months, you can have it approved. Okay. It also um, depends on the on the speed of the of the court, which is a uh, this is another story. <laughs> okay. Uh, and who do you think the target for that is? Sorry. Who do you think uh, the target for this is? So who can benefit from that? Only credit. I think we we have a typical case in Spain, which um, has come 
from the COVID situation. And we have many companies with what we call eco COVID um, loans, which are these, these um, loans um, secured by, by the government um, that um, probably companies won't be able to 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 repay. So um, I think and, and, and this is happening to all middle and small and companies in Spain, uh, which are the main companies we have. And but but also it can be interesting to companies to subsidiary companies from 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 abroad, um, from the UK or from the Germany who have a, a, a holding in, in, in London or in Munich or whatever. And and you have a, a subsidiary in Spain, and you need to restructure that. Mm, it, it it can be uh, an interesting tool as well. And um, sorry, sorry, and investors maybe. Investors as well. Loans. When 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 you are a, you are fun you are a fun and you have a creditor uh, positions in Spain, um, you may be interested um, in knowing all these. To recover, to to force how the, your plan um, must be uh, in depending a bit on, on the amount and and the percentage of of the debt you have, but it, it will be very interesting to acquire the company. Even as I said, with a Filsa case uh, has happened, and um, or, or just to or just to um, force uh, the negotiation as you want. Or, or buy a company for entering in Spain in the in in the sector, no? Or you, you can buy the company too. Yes, yes. Uh, this is a, a very interesting, very interesting as well. You are, if you are a, if you have a company, you want to to buy a, a company of your sector in Spain. You have you you can buy a, a credit uh, of that company and impose your plan proposed by you. And and capitalize the debt and and take control of company of the company. Yes. Okay. It, it can be used I for that as well. I think Christoph has a question. Uh, well, Jose Maria, uh, many thanks for uh, uh, for the interesting um, presentation. Uh, maybe let me add a few things from the German point of view, and then I have uh, two questions. So, what's from my point of view, is a very interesting is the development of the plan for the so-called micro companies because I think this is a Spain speciality and uh, especially uh, the whole proceeding to come to a plan and to solve and a crisis through a plan is very uh, cost intensive in Germany and that's why it's so far only used for a bigger companies and. It would be very interesting whether the new proceeding you uh, implemented in your law will help also smaller companies. Um, the, 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 the two questions I got. The one thing is you mentioned that uh, also a restructure, your, your law also will help restructuring companies outside of Spain. And my question on this is. Um, is this a possibility to avoid claiming for insolvency if the requirements are fulfilled in the respective country? So under German law, you are required to avoid a personal liability as a general manager to apply uh, for insolvency if your company is either over-indebted or um, illiquid. So the question on this is whether how does this fit with your regulation to say we can solve some crisis through the Spain law? Because this could be interesting in an international company because, you know, the discussions, there's no real international insolvency law. And I, I uh, interpret your uh, the, the, the Spain implication now as, as one step in this direction. And the other point I'm interested in is because this is always a big discussion in Germany. You said one of the main important things is the viability of the company. And on this, we always have discussions. Who has to check this 
and who is liable for this check because in Germany for this you need an expert opinion which costs you a lot of money. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay. Um, first of all, I want to say uh, that please, um, Maria Jose or Xavi, um, want to answer or say something, please feel free um, and, and recommend uh, everything together. Um, about the first uh, about the first uh, question, I, I don't have a, an answer. Um, I, 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 I understand that it can mean um, conflict between Spanish and somewhere else uh, law, but this is what I told you is what literally um, the Spanish law says. So um, in what way you can impose this to the other country? I'm not really sure of the of the legal um, details, mm, but what is sure is that uh, Spanish law permits to do that, and you can do it if you accomplish with the uh, requirements. If you are uh, holding in Spain, re re being restructured, and you need um, for the restructuring the, the the subsidiary to be restructured, um, if you accomplish that, mm, you, you 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 can impose a plan. Um, to the to the creators uh, abroad, um, they can defend outside. Um, I'm sure they will try, um, but I I don't know who would win this this conflict. I I'm, I haven't seen any case um, of this. No, but but I agree, completely agree, Jose Maria. If the company in the court uh, is is in Spain and the creators from abroad. Uh, has um, to to be inside this this law because the the debtor the company is uh, Spanish. Yes. Yes. Uh, hi. Hi. Good morning. I'm I'm Xavi. This this question uh, the the answer is a is a very technical point of the of the law that was included at the last time and in the last uh, article of the law on the on the bell <laughs> yes <laughs> and this is um, using the holland idea to to um, to have in the in the spanish law a system out of the uh, di um, uh, directive in the insolvency directive of Europe. Okay, a, a, in the same idea that the Holland or the, that in UK with the scheme, and it's called the the confidential plan, and is in a special uh, situation that you can. Uh, approve in Spain a confidential plan abroad to Spain that the, the plan out of the Spain is consensual plan. And it's thinking about the to reduce the cost of the restructuring for all the companies, for all the group. And then, and is a is a very it's a very specific uh, point of the law, uh, and, and thinking about the future. And but but it's true that in the in the first cases now in the Spain at the beginning of the law, a little company, well, little not 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 too little company, from from Extremadura in the west of Spain, used that about a, po a Polish Polish is Polaka, no Polish, a Polish company. And use that system to restructure in the Polish company. I don't know. Uh, it's, it's very, very, very specific question. Thank you for that. Okay. And the second was um, who uh, who checks this uh, viability of the company? Um, and the answer is, is uh, the same in the same in Germany. Uh, you, if you if you want to impose a non-consensual plan. You need to have a, an expert 
uh, named named by the court, uh, who 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 analyzes this viability and 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 tells the court and the other creditors um, what he thinks. If it mm, costs a lot of money, um, it, it, it is a it is a pub private negotiation be, between in Spain is a private negotiation with between the both of them. Um, in Celsa case, um, it was 20, shall we call it, 23 million? 23 or? million, all the cost of the restructuring, the insolvency practitioner was 23 million for um, 8,000 8, millions of debt. Okay. But is the, the, the markets uh, define in the future the cost of the insolvency practitioners? Now yeah. in Spain, uh, it's not regulated by the law, the cost. It's but this market. cost was for Felsa. For Felsa mm -hmm. is the biggest okay. case uh, okay. ever. Okay. Felsa was the biggest, yeah. No, no. And probably the us. biggest case. Um, it's not representative for the food, the future of the market, probably. OK, <laughs> OK. <laughs> we, we have seen we have seen cases in which the cost was uh, 3000 euro. So. Um, it depends. Okay. It depends. OK, a... yeah. Fine. Hey, Lee, you wanted to say something. Um, yes. Hello, everybody. Um, I'm Hayley from Shaw Gibbs Insolvency and we're in the UK and part of the DFK International Group. Um, thank you for the presentation, Joseph. That was really interesting um, to thank think you. about how uh, this could interact and impact on UK law going forward. Um, it seems that you are in Spain ahead of the curve, um, which is, is good to see because in the UK we don't have the micro company um, facility and that has really been I would say what has uh, prevented a lot of the smaller companies from accessing the UK version of this restructuring plan um, so I think it would be welcomed by the UK companies in the future if that law were to apply also into the UK. Okay. What um, I wanted to ask was about your public creditors, which is a huge factor in UK insolvencies. Um, in England, we have the Inland Revenue, Revenue or HM Revenue, Revenue and Customs. Customs. You may have heard, may of, have it. heard of it. They are, they are generally, generally a large creditor yeah. in any insolvency that we deal with in the UK. And they tend to hold a great sway and vote because they are... Um, a higher class of creditor, they come underneath, they come before even a secured creditor in the UK um, called a preferential creditor for certain elements of their debts. Um, and I um, wasn't sure what the situation in Spain was with those public creditors. Thank you, Hayley. Um... Uh, public public uh, credits are very protected in Spain. Very very protected in Spain. Um, it can be included in in a bank, um, but when 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 um, when you have a, debt, a public debt, but you have reached an agreement with the public institution, whatever it is, and you are up to date to the paying that debt. Okay? If you're up to date, you, you can affect that debt to the plan. But um, the debt mm, cannot, you cannot apply uh, debt discharge to that debt, it's forbidden. And it must be paid in a maximum time of 12 months. This is, this is the general rule. In, in the, it, it, it is true, as I said, um, the presentation that in the micro, uh, in the micro companies process, um, you can apply a fifteen percent debt or more, more um, if you uh, achieve something unachievable, which is get the vote yes of the public institution. But if you apply a fifteen percent um, discharge and the public institution doesn't come to the votation, 
it is considered to be yes. It's the only case when the difference in this in the microphone is first. I'm sure, um, am I um, I am am I answering your question? Yes, yes, yes. I think um, also it would be interesting if that approach was taken in UK law again because the inland revenue take a long time to react um, to any communication in the same way you mentioned about your banks in Spain. It's exactly the same in England um, and particularly with the inland revenue. Um, and it really does preclude um, progress um, in restructuring. So if it was the case, yeah, if it was the case that the that they were taken out um, of the process, it would help hugely. Um, although, again, in some cases, they're a very large debt. So in terms of looking at the viability of a company going forward, um, if you had to uh, pay all that debt back um, ahead of any other creditor, it, it may also have a negative impact. Um, so it would be interesting. It, it would depend on each case as to how much the revenue debt was um, in a UK situation. Um, I think the other main difference I'm understanding is in UK and a UK restructuring plan, you have to go through a court approval. So you have to first put the restructuring plan to the court before you then can put it to the creditors. Uh, which of course increases the costs. Um, and again, you seem to have a more flexible system that perhaps you can go to creditors first, and particularly in the micro company. Um, so I think your process could reduce costs overall, potentially. Okay. Um, yes, I agree with that with the public creditors. Um, Issue. Um, and when we are at companies, we try to tell them that um, the, the bad boy have, uh, have in this language. And um, well, because um, it's a problem. Something I would say is that, you, um, it, and this is important, um, when you make the plan, you can input or not, um, what you in the creditors. So you get. What isn't what happening is that the public interest just um, get out of the plan and are affected, and 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 uh, we, you, you can try to have make uh, the bilateral agreements, and 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 that's the way uh, it works usually. Okay. And and uh, yes, um, about this issue. Um, Yes, I think it's, it's a good thing to have a, a good pre-court uh, process because it, it as, as you said, it, it uh, reduces costs and time, mm. um, which is it, which is very important. It, it's it's a, this is on a big a, one of the big changes of, of our new law. Uh, it's pre-court, but the pre-court um, process and the actions you can do it is in this time. Yeah. Mm. And I start negotiating, and, and you got right over the plan, everything done, and, and rapidly approved and homologated. Mm. Mm. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Jose Maria, for the wonderful presentation. And please do not hesitate to contact us for any further explanation or questions that you, that you may have. Thank you, everyone, for your time. And thank you, Hayley and Christophe, for being here with us today. It has been an honor. Thank you very much. And again, if, if anybody's got any questions about UK law, if they have a client that has a, a UK holding company or, or subsidiary or has any other insolvency questions, then please feel free to, to contact me as well. Of course, uh, VFK is, is for this, no? Yeah. <laughs> th th thank, thank you, thank you from my part too, from uh, PSP in Munich, and the same counts for me as Haley said, and maybe Maria Schurzi, I think if there is an international company, maybe it could be some kind of structuring to go through the Spain law in this case. Mm -hmm. oh.
Thank you. I look forward to the to one case in this area. <laughs> 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 Thank you. Thanks to all. Thank you very much.